this chapter, this chapter six, was about the numerical resolution of differential equation. And we saw in previous session how to determine the condition okay, uh, that are required in order to the system to be solvable numerically. So first of all, this function of f of x, y need to be a Lipschitz function with respect to its second variable y. And also we need to study when possible, okay, the behavior with respect to round of error. Okay. Uh, now we are going specifically to talk about how the numerical resolution of this system work how we can solve this system using computer. All right, so the principle of uh, numerical methods is quite simple. So suppose Okay, we want to solve this system on the interval A and B. We will discretize here the interval A, B, okay, into n equal or n minus 1 equal step, okay, into n points. So these are the points x, i here, okay, and they are equally spaced okay by step h so if i use n point okay i have h is equal to b minus a over n minus 1 right where n is the total number of points like i said you need to divide by the number of intervals so if you have three points you have three intervals uh, two interval etc so now the principle of the numerical methods is to determine okay the points yi right corresponding to different the different point xi okay and this will give us the solution of y of x at these different points and and the first point here if i have a cauchy problem okay y of a equals y1, where y1 is a known value, 0, 1, or whatever, right? So, I have this point here. And now, I need to determine the next points, okay, the following points, knowing this condition. Okay, so, there is two types of numerical methods. The one we call explicit method, and... In this explicit method, okay, y i plus one, okay, will depend on or can depend, okay, on all the previous points, for example, x zero till x i and y0 till or y x1 x1 till xi y1 till yi but it cannot depend on the future point so, okay and the implementation of an explicit method is quite okay uh, straightforward so for example if we have this point if we have these three points, okay, this point here can depend upon this previous point, but they cannot depend on a future point here, yi plus 1, all right, or xi plus 1. So these are explicit methods. Now, in the implicit method, which are quite more complicated, to solve the y i plus 1 can depend on the previous point so we can have uh, okay till xn y i 
y1 to xn. It can depend, okay? It can depend, doesn't mean that we need to use all the points, okay? But so in the implicit method, yi plus 1 can depend on the next, okay, points here. For example, xi plus 2, okay, yi plus 2, or x there. Okay? So, of course, it can depend. Right? So, the solution or the resolution of an implicit method is more complicated because we need to solve a nonlinear system of equation. <coughs> Whereas for explicit method, okay, it is uh, much more simpler because we just use the previous point in order to calculate the point y equals one. Okay, now in this chapter, okay, our focus will be on the explicit method because they are stays forward to to solve. Okay, we will not treat the case of the implicit method, but I will give you example, okay, how we can derive, okay, uh, explicit, an explicit method. So, let's start with the simplest uh, explicit method, and which, which is also the less accurate, okay, which is the Euler method. 4 Euler method. Okay. So, like I said, I will recall the system of equation y prime of x equals f of x y, right? Y of a is equal to y1, or where y1 is some given value. Now the Euler method simply, okay, when we have the interval a, b discretized on n points, okay, this is the step h, okay, simply the Euler method write y i plus 1 is equal to y i plus h f of x i yi okay and starting by this point here i can calculate the next point y2 okay knowing the first point y1 this is the first point okay in matlab it's y of 1 because it's y of the first point okay this is some given value for example 0 or 1 or whatever and I can calculate now the y2, y2 equals y1 plus h f of x1, y1. And from the y2, I can calculate the y3 and etc. Now, you may ask from where come this formula? And that's what we will do. We will derive the formula. Okay, so derivation of this. There is now different way of deriving this this formula the first one being the Taylor expansion okay. so if we consider the Taylor expansion y i plus 1 is y x i plus h right because x i plus 1 is x i plus h so y i plus 1 is y of x i plus 1 is y of x i plus h okay so this is equal if we truncate the Taylor expansion okay up to the first order so this is equal y of x i plus y of x y prime of x 
at the point xi multiplied by h, okay, plus the high order term z, okay? But y prime at the point xi, y prime is f of x, y, so basically it's y of xi plus f of xi yi multiplied by h. All right? So, in this way we can derive the other methods from the first order Taylor's expansion. Okay? And as, you ex as we expect that this method will not be so accurate because it retains only the first term of the Taylor expansion. In order to be accurate, the h need to be very small. Okay. Now we can derive also the Euler method from the rectangle left corner approximation. So when we state that y prime of x is equal to f of x y. That means that y is the primitive of f. Okay? So if we know the value of y at the point yi, okay, so this would be the initial condition. So y at the point i plus 1 would be equals to yi plus the integral from xi to xi plus 1 of f of t y of t dt. Right? Now, if I replace this expression by the rectangle approximation using only two points, xi and xi plus 1, rectangle left corner approximation, so it's equal to h f of xi yi, right? The left point is xi, so it's yi plus h f of xi where and that's the other expression 